What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy, Mark the Sick Man Rodin. That's right, I'm sick again. I've been sick like three times this past month. I don't know what's going on. It's horrible, sad, sore throat, hurts. But if you guys hear my voice being a little bit weird today, that's why I'm a little <coughs> ill. Ill. All right, but today we're going over the 15 most legendary cars from the 1980s. We did the 1970s and the 1960s now. And I want you guys to keep in mind that this is all my personal opinion. I do try to put biases aside for these though, because if it was up to me, the most legendary car, the 1980s, y'all already know, is the FCR X7. Come on, don't play with me like that. But I didn't put it as number one. But anyway, guys. If you want to support the channel any more than you already are, head on over to www.smoothstance.com slash shop to pick yourself up a hat, shirt, and shorts. And before I get into the video, guys, I want to apologize for not uploading yesterday. I was so sick. I could barely talk. Uh, my throat has gotten a lot better over the night, so that's why I'm making the video today. But yesterday, I literally could barely talk. I could barely move, so I I'm sorry about that. But anyway, let's get right into the video. Alrighty, so coming in at number 15 is going to be the Dodge omni the little freaking hatchback that could from a company who had no place building a hatchback at all it was amazing it was like hey ever dodge we build muscle cars here's a hatchback by the way i know you guys didn't want it but we're gonna make one anyway but that's just who we are this little absolute pocket rocket came with a 2.2 liter turbocharged inline four making 146 horsepower and it was front wheel drive because it's a hatchback and literally all hatchbacks in the world are front wheel drive for some reason. As a matter of fact, can anybody tell me a hatchback that was rear wheel drive? I can't think of one right now off the top of my head, but I'm sure there is one out there. But anyways, uh, the Dodge Omni was an attempt at like a rising popularity uh, market, which was a hatchback world. And I think Dodge did really good with it. It kind of sucks that they don't make anything even close to it anymore, but they nailed it. Next up at number 14 is going to be the Mazda RX-7 FC. The first generation RX-7 had come and gone and people wanted something even better. And they were waiting for Mazda to give it to them and they delivered like a freaking Domino's. They delivered really fast. This one came with a 1.3 liter turbocharged two rotor rotary engine making 200 horsepower to the rear wheels and it looked incredible. This is also when Japanese cars started to take over the American market and people were happy to hear that they were trying to build something incredible over at Mazda even while still using a rotary engine. Uh, it was it was a change you know it wasn't it, people were like oh we're used to these muscle cars already now we're getting japanese cars what can they do and mazda showed that they can do stuff well and i like that number 13 is going to be the saab 900 turbo i made a whole deep dive video on this a lot of you guys watched it and this car is legendary in a completely different way than almost all the cars on this list it was not the best performing it was not the best looking but was an incredibly safe sports car that anybody could get their hands on. It was amazing. It came with a 2.1 liter turbocharged inline four, making a nice 143 horsepower, and it was front wheel drive as well. This is pretty much the Dodge Omni that we talked about before, but was much more affordable and much more safer than the Dodge Omni. That's the thing that made Saab so popular. They were so damn safe. One of the safest cars on the road, and you could still have fun in it too. It wasn't just a safe car. Plus, the like beetle hunchback of notre dame looks that this car has definitely helped it too number 12 is going to the chevy camaro irock z which would now be the third generation of the camaro and they were just now coming out of the gas crisis which meant that they had some ground to make up because all these american muscle cars had gone to v6s or very low power v8s so they had a, they had a little bit of a comeback on their hands this one came with a five liter v8 making a very impressive 210 horsepower to the rear wheels and now this horsepower number isn't insane i know that but like i said this was right before i mean right after the gas crisis and american car manufacturers just kind of like got slapped around by the japanese market a little bit there so they had some ground to make up and it was it was it was a promising start from chevy to say the least on top of that i think the third gen camaro looks amazing Next up is going to be the Toyota MR2. Yes, the first generation MR2. The MR2 that everybody thinks is like the deadliest car of all time because they can't seem to understand what snap oversteer is. But this little widow maker of a car came with a 1.6 liter supercharged inline four making only 145 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive. But trust me, that is all the car needed, okay? I know it's low horsepower, but it didn't need much more. This car was a car that was more aimed towards handling purposes and not really going fast in a straight line. And it did incredibly well at that. It was a little freaking go-kart if that go-kart likes to spin out whenever you applied the brakes. It was amazing. It's just like a Miata, but harder to handle. 
Number 10, you dirty dog, and it is going to the Toyota Supra Mark III. Yes, that's right, guys. There is more than just the Mark IV and Mark V Supras in the world. I know, it's surprising, but this one was freaking cool, and it came before both of them, and it came with a 3-liter turbocharged inline six making a nice 232 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive and this is where the supra name really cemented itself as something worth looking out for before that it was just kind of like a blow-off brand from celica's and uh this was the first time that they were going to go by their own name and it was like oh what are they going to do they did great all right they um, they came with an incredibly over-engineered motor called the one jz gte that would birth the two jz that we all know and love today it has incredible potential it's such, such a good car Number nine, however, is going to go to the Ford Mustang GT Fox body. Incredibly overrated in today's car world. I will be the first one to say that everybody wants a Fox body. I don't think they're that great, but it is an amazing car. This is the car that you see in all the 1320 video cash day videos, smoking people built with a turbo LS under the hood. Uh, it came with a five liter V8 making 157 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive. And there's no denying the fact that over the years it has become an icon in the community for being a great platform to build a drag car on. However, I do think it's funny that everybody that builds one of these fast Fox bodies puts a turbo ls motor in them to make it fast it's kind of ironic but either way the chassis is amazing the car is amazing it's still relatively cheap too so it's still a pretty good option number eight is going to the honda crx which is one of the most coolest hondas of all time in my personal opinion and allow me to explain all right buddy it ain't that fast all right it, it ain't that fast. it's a honda okay it ain't meant to be that fast it only comes with a 1.6 liter inline four making a nice for its time and size 160 horsepower and it was front wheel drive because once again this is a hatchback and they're all freaking front wheel drive i hate it anyways this thing was not only quick especially for a honda but it had an insane motor to build under the hood as well it was one of the first tastes of honda's wonderful tuning potential that we got in the world and for that I give it a big old thumbs up it also looks really cool one of the most unique looking hondas of all time they are pretty expensive though number seven is going to the dmc delorean this car is legendary for all the wrong reasons it really isn't that great of a car and in my personal opinion it looks horrible but boy oh boy somebody time travels with it and now it's cool come on buddy i could time travel in my 350z it's not that cool anyways the car came with a 2.9 liter v6 making only 130 horsepower going to all four wheels which i do have to say the fact that it is all-wheel drive and rear engine is the only really cool thing about this car but it is horribly slow it's badly engineered and in my opinion it is one of the ugliest cars of all time period and i'm not going to go back on that however i do know it is a very legendary car so i gave it the number seven spot but i don't think it deserves a number seven spot Number six is going to the Mercedes 190E Evo, which is the opposite of the DeLorean in my opinion. It's a great car and deserves all the hype, if not more than the hype that it gets, because this thing is freaking sick. One of the coolest cars for Mercedes, period. It comes with a 2.5 liter inline four, making a very nice 232 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive. And in case you don't know, this was pretty much like a black series C63 AMG before excuse me jesus before that car was a thing it was built to perform not only good in a straight line but around a track as well and it is absolutely legendary for that it smoked the competition in that i also love the looks of these i love the power behind them and in my opinion they deserve so much more hype number five however is going to the buick grand national gnx one of the most legendary muscle cars of all time and this one absolutely deserves the hype i get i guess you could say it's not really a muscle car but Anyway, you could get it in any color as long as that color was black, and it came with a 3.8 liter turbocharged V6, but that V6 would manage to make a nice 276 horsepower going to the rear wheels partner. It was a great display that America can make more than just good V8s. They had the sauce in them to make a great V6 as well. It also just looked menacing like an all black family car roaring at you. It's just so cool to me and it makes sense that everybody wanted one. They also made a very limited number of these cars and so nowadays they're like worth ridiculous amounts of money but in my, they deserve it. They're an incredible car. Number four is going to the Audi Sport quattro and it pained me not to put this car in the top three trust me but the other three cars are just so much more legendary i just couldn't do it this car was insane like ridiculous at group b rally racing and it helped create audi's amazing all-wheel drive system that they still use to this day so 
It came with a 2.1 liter turbocharged inline five, making an insane 302 horsepower going to obviously all the wheels. This is why I look at cars like the DeLorean and wonder how people think that it's cool. This car, the Sports Quattro was built for a purpose. It was an insane rally car and absolutely crushed the competition. They also look different from anything on the road ever and they hold their place in history for sure. Third place, however, is going to the Porsche 959. This is one of the most legendary Porsches of all time and for good reason. It was just incredible at winning races. It just didn't lose. You're like, oh, I, I'm, I'm looking to get into motorsport, but I don't want to lose. What car should I get? The Porsche 959. It came with a 2.8 liter twin turbocharged flat six, making a massive 444 horsepower, Wendy's 444, and it was all-wheel drive. The looks alone are something that could carry this car to the absolute top, but don't worry, they don't have to, because it was insanely good at racing. There was a crashed example of this car recently sold at auction for over a million dollars. That's how insane these cars truly were. They are like one of the most valuable cars of all time, and they deserve it, man. They're freaking insane. Great job, Porsche. Second place, however, silver medal is going to go to the wonderful Ferrari F40. This is one of Ferrari's most legendary cars of all time arguably it is ferrari's most legendary car of all time and it's commonly referred to as their best road car ever and for honestly pretty good reason they came with a 2.9 liter twin turbo v8 making a delicious 471 horsepower going to the rear wheels it was a monster of a car that was built to prove that ferrari still had it in them and it absolutely succeeded at that everybody was saying that ferrari was like getting boring around this time and so ferrari was like oh okay all right well, what about an F40? It, take that, critics. The car also looks like the most beautiful thing I've ever laid my eyes on, but the performance was also out of this world, especially for the 80s, so it deserves it. First place, however, is going to none other than the BMW M3 E30. I know you're probably so confused right now, scratching your head, picking your butthole, asking me how a BMW got placed higher than the F40 and the 959, but allow me to explain, okay? It came with a 2.3 liter inline four, making a nice 215 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive. And this car is by no means the fastest on this list, but it's everything else that the car did that makes it so great. It single-handedly started one of the best sports cars lines out there, the BMW M3, which has made some insane cars since then. We have cars like the M3 E36. On, arguably, you could say because of this car, it also started the M5s and the M6s, and those are also incredible. It also had some of the best looks to ever come from Germany in, of all time, in my opinion, and it was still relatively affordable compared to the competition. On top of all that stuff, it was entered into literally any form of motorsport that you could think of and was good at almost all of them as well. Drag racing, fine. Drifting, fine. Rally racing, surprisingly really good at it actually track racing incredible it's an incredible car that started an incredible line of cars as well so to me it deserves the number one spot but ladies and gentlemen that is the end of today's video i hope you enjoyed if you did please be sure to like comment another video you'd like to see down below and subscribe to the channel for more i am going to keep the outro short today because my throat is like starting to close up because i'm talking so much and i can't i can't do this right now so thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it i really appreciate all the support lately when I'm not sick anymore, we'll be back to posting every day and in a very jolly mood. But right now, I just feel horrible. So thank you guys so much for watching. Das Vidania. Have a nice night.